sensation of beauty always comes with like the most creepy horrific atmosphere that you'll ever find driving it in just nighttime i don't know how many times like i remember uh you know you know how chad had that uh plot of land down nameless like he still you, does yeah still does like, but if you drive during the day it's just like a nice little you know drive in the little woods mm-hmm. but at night like you you don't want to see another car you don't want to see anything you just want to be able to get to where you need to be and the, that'd be it Oh, yeah. Because it's like the roads are winding and they go up and down. So sometimes you can't see what's in front of you. And you're just like, oh, man, I hope, like, I don't see anything weird. Yeah. And uh, we, me and Nelly went out there the other day to pay, uh, to, to pay one of the guys or whatever to pay, to give him because he, because one of Chad's friends works with us and that uh, went out there to drop him off in advance. And, uh, it's a good hike from, from name, from 1431 and Nameless Road. It's a pretty good hike out there. And, uh, so you got, yeah, and it was dark, and then when you get when you start turning down them windy roads, it's pitch dark out there. Yeah, there's no lights, and and, and that that I think that that area is a lot more heavily populated though than than that area between Thorndale and Lexington. Oh, I'm sure Thorndale and Lexington, there ain't nothing. I mean, you know, we found what we thought might have been the remnants of the cabin that was besieged by those creatures, but we're not for sure. That that's what I've been told over the years that 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 cabin had sat there for a long time and it was all burned up. And it's in the, it's, it's, you can see it off of one of the, the back, uh, uh, gravel roads, one of those dirt roads. You can see that cabin and it's all burned up and, uh, it's, but you have to, you have to really be looking and I knew where to go. So I said, that supposedly is the cabin and it's been there for, you know, well over a century. And so it, you, you take a look at it and it's very, uh, eerie in that, in that area. And, and there's like all these dead trees around it where I guess there had been a fire and, um, yeah. You wouldn't, if you just driving along and you stumbled across it, you know, you'd be like, oh, what is that? But I kind of knew where to go. And my wife commented, <clears throat> she's like, there ain't no inhabitants out here for miles. And I told her, I said, yeah, you're right. There's nothing. It's all private property. It's in a pasture. You know, it's just in a pasture off the side of the road. And so you got all these like uh, very rural areas and they all have their own uh, stories and ghosts and things. Uh, another thing I wanted to, wanted to talk about uh, on the Hoxie Bridge uh, supposedly now this is another thing. And, and I've often wondered this because I've, I've kind of postulated on this. People see this little troll type creature that supposedly lives under the bridge the, the where it's currently at right now. And they'll, they'll, they'll say that this is a, a tr- it's kind of an urban legend. I don't really have anybody who can say it's always like, Oh, a friend of mine's friends, grandmother's babysitters, housekeepers, you dogs, know, dogs, m- monkey, for, you know, <laughs> dogs, monkey, <laughs> the monkey was like, ee, ee. so, <laughs> no, but they'll say there was, there was a, a story about this little troll, like imp like thing. And they'll always, but it's always a third part. I can't really get anybody to say that they saw it. It was always somebody else's somebody yeah. else. And so I've wondered before if this, if this thing is actually the hog, you know, and like people just think, oh, they see this, maybe it's an actual living hog that just took up residence there. And then people will see it and think, oh, that's gotta be, you know, that's, the, that's this, you know, demon or whatever. And in yeah, reality, every, every bridge got to have a troll, I guess. Got to have a troll underneath it, right? Yeah. So, uh, like, well, like Will Barger Bridge over there in Maynard, you know, when, when Chief came on the show and he was talking about Will Barger Bridge, now Will Barger Bridge has a goat man. But it's not the one when, when like where you go to work in Maynard. It's not that one. It's not the one on on uh, two ninety. If you go further down, and then and then you're heading like you're going toward uh, one of our other posts, like where where uh, Mike was working or whatever, you'll run into another little bridge, which me and Nelly went over. And I said that I, I oh, showed I, it. I know where you're talking. You know where about. you know where it's yeah. at. And I showed Nelly, and, and we slowed down. And I said, "This is where the goat man's at." And she's like, "Well, then why are you stopping?" <laughs> Because it was late at night and it, and it was foggy. It was very foggy and it was very creepy. And she goes, this is creepy. Like, even for her, she likes that kind of stuff. But she was like, no, just go. I feel weird here. So we had the windows down. She rolled the window and we took off. And she was just like, I'm not real I'm not real into this right now. I don't want – I felt weird. And I did get a weird fe- feeling there, you know, kind of like when I did at Goatman Bridge. I felt like you could feel like there was something there. And it was pitch dark. And then you ha- and you have to go real slow. You go around this winding road. So there's a lot of weird stuff out here in Central Texas. It's within striking distance of our – house where we live and i'm uh, sure if you guys would have stayed there i think you guys would have saw something because i think it might be seasonal maybe it's like certain times that certain things happen that's why it's not all the time well that that was how it was at my house where i lived in south austin it was we called it seasonal 
I remember your your stepdad coming over and him saying, "Is is the, is the ghost active right now?" Because he didn't want to come in the house, <laughs> and I was like, "Actually, no, nothing's really happened lately." And then he came in one time, and the the aquarium water like shook, like you know, like it was very weird. Um, yeah, I tell you, I tell you, man, there's so many scary, creepy, haunted, weird things in in, in Austin. So, anyways, let me get to this other dogman encounter. So, so there was another story I got off of that bridge. Uh, near, near the bridge, there was a dog man encounter and this happened there. There's now this is just by the bridge. Now over there by Granger Lake, there've been at least two other dog man sightings that I got and I, and I can get into those too. Well, this one was right by the bridge and it was somebody that was fishing right there by the bank that they, they parked right by the bridge or underneath it. And they went and they went like, a, you know, about a quarter mile up and they decided to go fishing and they were on one side of it and little small rocks uh, began to, f- to to drop into the water, and they were looking, and there was a thick foliage across the the bri- the, the the river, uh, and they said it was only you know wasn't real far apart. It was about twenty yards across at that point. It wasn't far, you know, twenty twenty five yards. And he said that at that point it's very narrow. Now I know exactly where that's at because I've been out there many times, and that's a good fishing spot right there where, where the 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 river kind of narrows, and and you can catch fish right in there pretty pretty good. And I've actually fished and I've actually swam in that area and wouldn't swim there now. But anyway, because of what I know, but they were, they were, there's something we're throwing small rocks and they thought, oh, there's somebody over there. So they, they told him you better knock it off, you know, and they told him to, 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 to stop throwing the rocks, whatever. Well, it continued to do it, you know, until they had to stop fishing and it was about an hour till dark, you know, and they said, you know what, let's just go. And as they got in their vehicle they're in an SUV and this happened, this didn't happen that long ago. This, this happened like where the old Hawks, where the bridge used to be. It's not there anymore where it crosses over the San Gabriel. So this was in the two thousands. This wasn't the Hoxie bridge. This didn't happen at the Hoxie bridge. It happened because now there's just like a, 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 like a road over it, whatever. And so they got, got in their SUV and they went to get on the road, whatever. And they saw this thing come up to the edge of the woods and it was blackish brown. They said it looked like it was dirty, like its feet and it's what would have been paws, but it was standing upright. Absolutely a dog man. There was no, like the other, the other story was like a misidentification. Maybe there was some, uh, back the, and forth, back and forth conjecture yeah. of what it was. This was absolutely a dog man. There was no doubt about it. Um, they said that it had really tall pointy ears and it looked like a really large wolf on two legs, like a very timber wolfish like creature. And it was standing there right, looking right at them out of the wood line as they crossed over the, 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 the water. And they were just like dumbfounded. There were three of them. It was uh, uh, a guy, I don't want to say friends because they're not really my friends. They were friends of friends and I got to talk to them. In fact, one of them might have, you might have met one of them and didn't even know it. He was at Emily's wedding. Oh, really? Yeah, and so he he was there, and I was actually talking to him about that. Well, being um, the social butterfly, um, I probably I'm sure I met him. Yeah, well, you were pretty you were pretty <laughs> in, imbibing that night. You were very, and everybody was pretty. Uh, I had a kidney stone. <laughs> I was telling Uncle Butch <laughs> the other day, him and my aunt Bev, that my kidney stone was killing me that night. You remember that? Yeah, and I was I mean, sitting I there don't. at the table I, just. Wow. I really don't remember it, but yeah, I remember that you had one. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. You remember yeah. the kidney stone, but. I was just very, uh, I was in a lot of pain. So we, we kind of got into that, that story a little bit there, but he had told me this before. Um, so anyways, they, they, they were driving past it and they looked to the right and they saw this creature, uh, weird thing about it. The girl that was at that time, the girlfriend of his friend, cause he was driving, she was in the back seat looking down at her phone and they were like, Oh my gosh. And then she looked up, she tried to snap a photo of it, but all it looked like was a gray blur when they were driving by. So interesting sidelight about her. She had a dog man encounter, uh, before that. So it could have been something that stalked her because she didn't live that far from there. She lived on the other side of Granger on the West side of Granger, like going toward Georgetown. And so she claims that she would ride her bike late at night. And this was her encounter. And she was out riding her bike and, and she would ride, down the road, go during the railroad tracks and then cut back up. And I know exactly where she was going and that area where she was at. And then she would cut back across where the town was. And it was about a two and a half mile trek. And then she would ride her bike and she'd do it a couple of times. 
And uh, she said she was out riding her bike. She was about 17 years old. Um, I think it was two years before that that incident happened because this was when she was right out of high school. And uh, there again, it was like the 2000s or whatever, it was early 2000s. And she was riding her bike. And it was crazy because she was telling me that she she knew, she like in her mind's eye, she saw the creature before she, like before it jumped out onto the road. Like she's like, I just had this image. Like deja vu kind of where, or uh, like. I don't want to say deja vu because she didn't use those words. She didn't say I had deja vu and then, you know, a werewolf jumped out onto the road. It was kind of like she said that she had this weird feeling, you know, it was like a weird feeling or whatever, like something was there. Something was watching her. So like her sixth sense was ringing off saying like, hey, like watch out basically. We've talked before on the show too about, you know, about women having more of a sense of the paranormal like they'll sense it more than men because like you'll watch these shows, which I don't watch many of them, but you'll see and the man will go, yeah, I saw a shadow come out of the wall and try to eat my wife. I, I don't know. I went back to sleep. You know, <laughs> the wife's like, yeah, I was being attacked. And, and uh, I, I told my husband for a month that something was trying to kill the kids and he just would go to sleep and then order pizza, you know, and go to sleep. So that, that, that you get that yeah. all the time. But she said that she felt like, but I, we had talked about on the show that these women will feel like something's there and they'll they'll see it in their mind's eye. Like, you know, they'll see an image of it in their mind's eye, you know? Like, um, like I believe even your mom and me have talked, you know, with, with, with Chad, you know, and we've talked about how when she was having the weird dreams, you know? Yeah. She would see these things like in her mind's eye. Like she, she could see, she knew what they were, you know? It was like these weird, uh, like a demonic type entity, you know, that was trying to harass her, you know? And she would feel it, you know, and, and like feel that it was there or whatever. And, and she would see it like in her mind, you know. Well, this 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 girl, when she was only 17 years old, um, I think this was in the early 2000s or whatever, she she claimed she, she was riding her bike and this creature or whatever like jumped out onto the road right in front of her. And she said it, it just shook off like it was it was in a ditch. It was like a muddy, wet ditch because it had kind of rained. It was that time of year. And uh, she said that it kind of jumped off onto the road and shook off. And she just like slowed her bike down and stopped. And she, it was on all fours. It didn't get up and walk on two legs or anything, but she said it was abnormally large. She said that it was probably, uh, the height of like a, a small car on all fours. And she said it turned and looked at her and it opened, literally opened its mouth like as wide as it could. She said it looked abnormal, crazy big rows of teeth. Like it, it looked like every to- tooth was a canine. It was just crazy looking. She said it looked absolutely prehistoric. She's like, if I, if I had to say it looked like, you know, what you would imagine like a prehistoric creature would look like. And she said it just stared at her. And when it opened its mouth, she said, I honestly, I was like, I thought it was yawning. But then she said she got a very malevolent, like evil feeling from it. And it said it kind of narrowed its eyes and kind of got hunched down like it was going to like, like jump out at her. And just then this truck was coming down the road. It turned, it looked at the truck, it looked back at her, and then jumped off the, into, onto the other side of the road and then took off. So then she got scared. She turned around and rode her bike back into the uh, very small uh, town of Granger and <laughs> called her mom for from her cell phone, and she was shooken up and, and scared to death, and she called. Now, here's what's weird, though. She said that the creature that they saw at the river in San Gabriel was very, um, like, not, not a very, it wasn't a a humongous uh, creature she said it was like probably about six and a half feet tall, not, not, you know, at least a foot shorter than the one that I saw back in 1990. So you would think that this is not the same animal. It was, she said it was kind of skinny. Uh, the one that they saw at the, at the river, the one that, that jumped out in front of her when she was 17, a couple of years before that was very large, it looked very flesh and blood. They both did. It looked like a giant, you know, with her words, were like a giant wolf the size of a bear. And she said that she didn't know what it was, but that it was very, uh, very ugly. And it smelled, had a horrible smell because it was sitting in the ditch, smelled like sewage. And she could smell it before she was, when she was riding her bike up to the spot where she, this thing jumped out, she said she smelled something. And the, the smell, I think, triggered an image in her head. But she said that the image that she got in her head was of a werewolf. Like she immediately thought werewolf in her head, like there's a werewolf here. And she goes, I don't know how I knew that or why I thought that. She's like, but I thought that there was something evil and demonic right in that area. And she said that seconds later, this thing jumped out onto the road. She said that she, she felt like she was going to faint. She's like, and the only time in her life 
Um, and when I talked to her about the story, she was already like, uh, in her mid thirties, whatever. But she said that she felt like she was going to pass out, like she was going to faint literally. And she said that I felt like, like nauseous. And she's like, I felt like, uh, if I would have kept going, that this thing absolutely would have just jumped on me and tore me apart. And just, she's like, I had it in my mind's eye that it was just going to drag me into a field and devour me. And she said that, that she really believes that that's what its plan was, was to do that. But then that truck, that farm truck came riding down the road and she took the chance to turn and run off, you know? Uh, so that story, the, you know, that, that, those two stories right there go together because that's in that whole Granger area. I, I don't know what to make of that. What do you think, Tony? Um, well, that's very interesting. Moving on. Uh, so the next, I'm just kidding, Tony, go ahead. You do this to me every time, so then I don't really know what to say anymore. So, uh, <laughs> Wolf Wolf, scary. Wow. <laughs> Seriously, so... what? Anyway, I, I don't think it's the same thing. It's obviously a different you know, description of the, the creature. So I don't think it's the same one that she saw that might have been stalking her. I think it might have just been a coincidence that she saw a similar creature beforehand. I think that the the coincidence of it happening twice to the same person is pretty rare, rare, but you know, you, unfortunately it did happen to her twice and two different things. Yeah, absolutely. Two different creatures. But what, what are the odds? Like yeah. that is so weird. And, and, you know, and I talked to her in person and when she, when she told me the incidents, because she, she was the first one to speak up about the one at the river. And then the other guy who I know pretty well, he, he spoke up and said, yeah, he told me pretty point blank too. He was like, I don't want this going on no show. <laughs> it's like, well, I can don't have to say your name. You know, they're not going to know who you are. So I, I'm not going to say his name, but he was just like, yeah, I don't, I don't want that going on a show and people coming and messing with me. But I say, yeah, I'm not going to say your name, but anyway, so you know who you are. I'm not going to say your name jerk. But anyway, uh, th that, 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 that's a crazy story. And, um, I, I don't know what to make of that and, and why the same person would have the same, uh, like having it have two encounters. One thing I've been told, and I don't know what the validity of this is, but that there are people who are definitely predisposed to having these encounters, but they also, these people will have multiple encounters in their life. Fortunately for me, I'm not one of them. It was kind of a one-off for me. Uh, thank goodness. But there are people that will have multiple encounters or they'll see one and then they will, run into another one, like, you know, somewhere later on in their life, or, or they will have one, they'll see one by the, on the side of the road. And then they'll have one, probably the same creature come right up to their house. Yeah. But that's like following them. But this thing, mm -hmm. the only thing that the only way it would be possible is if this, you know, where bear wolf somehow got like a P 90 X and just starved itself or something. There's no way it went from that huge creature to some skinny, scrawny one. The keto. <laughs> He's on the keto diet, dude. He <laughs> uh, Maybe uh, Corona just attacked all the... Oh, uh, my God. <laughs> oh, this is way before Corona. <laughs> oh, well, uh, some other disease that came from who knows where, probably. Now, uh, my theory would be the keto diet. Because, yeah. <laughs> yeah, hey... Chad swears by it. So does Jack. <laughs> they all they all believe in that uh, in that keto diet, man. I tell you what. Um, so yeah. So basically, she had the, the werewolf ch chased her, and it was on keto. I, I would th from the description of the first uh, encounter, which I actually heard after this the the second encounter. It was a very um, like the second encounter was nothing like as terrifying for her as because she was in the vehicle driving fast past it. Whereas she was on a bike the first time. And so I took that into account and I thought, well, maybe she's telling us that there is a creature, you know, like, like may maybe she's telling us that there's this like, uh, this giant dog man like creature, um, because she was Swamp so, bear. she was so, <laughs> she was so scared, like, cause she was like on her bike and, and it was right there out in the, in the open. That maybe her mind, and this could happen, you know, maybe her mind uh, imagined that it was a lot bigger and, and, and you know, larger than she. So I asked her for a size comparison to the truck. And that was another thing. I did ask that. I asked for the color of the eyes. She said she don't remember you know, either in either case. Now, the two guys that saw the, were the, the werewolf looking creature by the river, 
by the San Gabriel River and that Hoxie area the, did say that it that they remembered it being like a yellowish color. Um, the teeth were like a whitish, yellowish color too. She said that the big one that jumped out in front of her was black and brown, but that the brown could have been from the mud, which was another another description of the creature from the river. Same thing. The brown could have been from the mud, like because it crawled up the the bank, you know. So it could it, that that would explain like the brown on it. So they could have just been black creatures that had you know brown mud or whatever. I thought about that and I thought, well, maybe because she saw it and it was she was on her bike, she imagined that it was bigger and more menacing because she was more well, afraid. Maybe since it's also been in that little like sewage thing or forever, maybe it had like just a bunch of stuff on it, make it a little bit bigger, make it look more bulky. Yeah, yeah. She couldn't really give me a frame of reference to the truck. She just says, you know, by the time the truck was coming down the road, it jumped off the road. She said that it was not 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 nearly as big as the truck, but maybe you know a small car, you mm-hmm. know? So that's weird. Uh, I did, I did have another weird story out of the, the, the San Gabriel river that, that there was a, the, this is what I was told, um, that back in the thirties, uh, a friend of my grandfather's, you know, his name was Ralph. He died years and years ago and old man, Ralph, we called him old man, Ralph. He, he told us a story of a giant snapping turtle that lived in the San Gabriel right there by the Hoxie Bridge. And when they were kids, that they would go out there and swim when he was a young man, you know. And supposedly that that turtle had been there for over 100 years. That's the story. And that it was the size of a Volkswagen. They claimed that this turtle, and they even had, and the turtle's name was Oliver. Uh, That's another weird story. Now, I've heard that story twice. I heard that story from great, great uncles. And I heard that story from Ralph. And, you know, he lived in in an area uh, which would be on the other side of Thrall, which is not far from all this, folks. These little towns are all, you can look on a map and you can look at all these towns where they kind of like, where they they intersect and meet, whatever. So you would look up like Granger, you would look up uh, Thrall, you would look up Thorndale, Lexington, and there's all this land in between there. And there's these little bitty uh, side areas like like. Hoxie, Byersville, Noack that are no longer in in towns. They're not townships. They were at one time towns and they're probably all about the same size, but those towns just kind of died off, you know, and now the uh, the only thing they have in those places are beer joints. There's like a a hall and a beer joint, I think in Byersville, Rice's Crossing has like a couple little beer joints. uh, And one of them is now closed, I believe. And then there is a beer joint, I think a restaurant in Noack, which may be defunct now too, because of the virus may have destroyed all that. But uh, the, these little towns, you know, Granger still has a few stores and things there. Um, Bartlett, same thing. So I, I grew up around all these towns and all this stuff. Now, the old timers swarping down that this turtle was a giant snapping turtle. Now, I don't know what uh, what kind of what this turtle looked like. All I have is descriptions of it. They said it looked very old, prehistoric looking, and that they claim that that it bit a guy's leg off. Uh, the guy was that it grabbed a hold of a dude, <clears throat> it snapped the bottom part of his leg off, and then when he was trying to crawl up the embankment at a Fourth of July party, like a group of people that were out there celebrating the Fourth of July, and they said there were no less than forty, fifty people out there that this giant turtle crawled up onto the bank and grabbed this guy by his leg that was what was left of his leg, it started to pull him in the water. And several people got down there. They were braver back then, I guess. And then they began to pull this guy off, and it pulled his leg out from the hip. And that he got to to he got medical attention, whatever. And they they managed to cauterize the wound or stop the bleeding, whatever, according to these old timers. And so that was a story that was really creepy. And so when we when I went swimming out there, in that San Gabriel, I knew that there were snapping turtles in there, and that they would buy, it'd take nips at you. But that story scared me because they said that this thing was the size of a car and that it supposedly lived under the bridge. Now, going back to the little troll-like like creature that, where the bridge is at now, there are stories and people that claim that there is a little magical being that lives underneath that, that, that bridge. And I have a dogman story from where the bridge is now. Now, according to this person, okay, now this is a weird story. Uh, this person told me, and of course, like I said, this is a person that said that they knew a person. And so I think the story was, and I, and I know the guy that told me this story, I was just talking to him on Facebook the other day. This was his friend who 
told him this story. They he was visiting from another town called Rockdale, and they went out there uh, to uh, go check it out or whatever, go camp or whatever, because there's campsites out there. And that they supposedly nothing happened the first time they went. So the guy was like, "Hey, man, this place is pretty cool." So he went back with his girlfriend and his girlfriend's mom, and they went walking around on the bridge. And they see this like weird looking little uh, troll looking thing. They said it was green. Now here's what's weird. He, him, according to his friend's girlfriend, okay, his mom. So that goes kind of like all the way out. The girlfriend's mom claims she saw it and it looked almost like a green Muppet looking creature. Uh, I don't know what that means. Uh, you know, what the, a Muppet, that could be anything. But she said that it looked like a green Muppet looking creature and that it was dancing around out there on the other side of the bridge in the middle of the night and that there was a fire that was glowing in its hands. So she yells to uh, her daughter and the daughter's uh, boyfriend, which is this other guy that I know, that's his friend. So they came running up. Now, the guy does, claims that he didn't actually see it, that it was the mom that saw it. And then the sister caught a glimpse of something running under the bridge. But now, now that is that story as far as the troll goes. Now, what that has to do with the dog man, I don't, I'm not 100%, but but later on that night, uh, the 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 mom's uh, boyfriend shows up with another friend, and they were like, hey, let's go down there and see if we can find this troll. So these two talked the uh, mom into going with them. She gets about halfway down the trail that we were on, and she says, I don't want to go. I don't want to do this. This is too scary, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So she decides to to go back up the hill, and just then she hears these two guys start screaming and come running back up the hill. They walked under the bridge. They looked under the bridge, and under the bridge was underneath there was a werewolf looking creature. They said it was very shaggy. Uh, it had like long hair coming off of its arms and legs, which is another weird description. Uh, it had a very elongated, pointy snout, very pointy ears, red glowing eyes. Remember, the hog was red glowing eyes. And and it was it was down on all fours, and they said that the arm that the the front limbs were very much like arms, and it had talons on on the on the uh, fingers or whatever at the end of it, and that it like leapt out at them, and then they took off running, and of course they got away. Nothing happened. So here's the rub. I don't know these two guys, and it's not just somebody telling me that somebody saw something. It's somebody telling me that somebody else, somebody else. You know what I mean? So you're getting a, a story from that's kind of getting out there. Like, I don't know his girlfriend. I don't know the mom. I don't know the, these guys. But the, the mom sees this troll-looking creature who was dancing around by the bridge. Now, I've heard stories of, like like I said, this person saw, knows this person that knows this person that's seen this troll. Uh, nobody I've ever talked to has said that they actually saw the troll or that they're, they've seen this troll. It's always just been little stories of of you know of a troll or whatever what what would you think if that if this story is to be believed if this is what really happened is this troll the dog man is this a werewolf is it projecting itself as a werewolf to scare these people because according to the mom it was a very diminutive little creature now i asked for for more information from the guy and he he said well i'd have to get back with them the the girlfriend and then because it was his ex at that point and <laughs> He would have to get information from her, and then she would have to get information from the mom. Didn't get any information about it having a little hat or anything like that. Said it looked kind of like a little Muppet, which is weird. Like, okay, what is that? I mean, there's a lot of Muppets. Is it a Fraggle from <laughs> from Fraggle Rock? Is it one of the little uh, dudes from, is it a Gelfling from the Dark Crystal? I mean, what what kind of Muppet are we talking about? Is it Kermit the Frog? And like, it's I don't Elmo. know. It's just a giant little red Elmo. High voice and everything. Was it Elmo? Was it Elmo? Elmo down there turning into a dog man? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's I guess anything's possible for it to be able to like project itself like that. Is that something that I think it did? I don't really know. I think it might. It could have just been actually a dog man that was the, the, around that area. Who knows? Um, it, it's very difficult to say because, you know, I've never heard of a case where a, a creature will like project uh, such a specific cre an another specific creature to try to scare away people mm -hmm. you know so i mean that's why it's like it's a very unique case to that's why it's hard to say if like they have a connection or not
Well, think about this. <clears throat> think about if this story is to be believed, and I'm only telling you this story because it's it's very interesting. You know, um, it could be, you know, just people's overactive imaginations for all we know, because, you know, there's a lot of weird stuff that goes on in and around that area. Now, I do have a guy who who swears up and down that that he was stalked by a dog man around Granger Lake when he just recently when he was fishing over there, and he claimed that it jumped into the water and he caught just a slight glimpse of it, but it was big and hairy and he he couldn't tell me if it had a snout or it could have been a Bigfoot, you know, whatever. Didn't get a good description of. For some reason, he was convinced though that it was a dog man, like he believed it was. Didn't even get in anything like any kind of like, oh, I saw it in my mind's eye, nothing like that. So, you know, you can't really say, oh, it was a dog man because you didn't really see it. But he was convinced it was because there's stories of these things out there. Now, th this this is what could be happening. This little troll looking creature. OK, this podling, if you <laughs> whatever it was, it was dancing around. It got scared, ran under the bridge. It is a shapeshifter. Maybe that troll is its actual form, its true form, I guess. And it changed itself into a menacing werewolf when these two guys went to go look for it. That could be what's going on. Or what if this creature is, like you said, it's just two different things. Maybe the creature ran under the bridge. Uh, this werewolf looking creature comes up. It runs off. It goes and hides because, you know, it's obviously lower on the food chain than that thing. Or... What if it has control of this creature and that creature is it's like its pet or its uh, guardian or maybe it has some sort of like uh, because I've heard stories and I've actually seen these weird photos of these little diminutive looking uh, little manitos, these little duendies riding on the backs of like Bigfoot and Dogman. I've seen these pictures and I know Sal had one and he had showed me and uh, it was very odd. And, uh, you know, I've seen them around like different pictures. One of them I saw definitely looked CGI'd, you know, but th this, I mean, what what if that is what's going on? What if this this creature has control of this dog man? It doesn't even have to be control. I mean, they could just be, you know, two people living in a forest and just hanging out. I mean, what? Th just because you know, I think it might just be like, hey, we're weaker, you know, but, you know, we they just probably help each other out somehow. I don't know how the little troll people would help them out. But I just don't see <laughs> That's them. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't, I'm, who knows what their capabilities are? Like, oh, maybe yeah. they can do something that you know the uh, dog man can't really do. So I mean, they just help each other out. Like, hey, I'll protect you. I'm obviously the top of the food chain here. You don't really have to worry about you know other creatures coming in and attacking you. As long as you just do something for help. Or what help if you. what if this little troll can help it like hypnotize deer or something? Or that sounds know. crazy. I know this is getting weird, but you know what I'm saying? Like maybe it has some sort of a, of ability. Yeah, I'm sure it has some, something some sort that of magic ability. If there's a fire glowing in its hand, you know, and, uh, and like I said, this is kind of a weird story, but like if the story is to be believed, it, it had some sort of ability to control the elements, then, I mean, I don't see why I couldn't shapeshift, but if it is in a symbiotic relationship with this creature, where, you know, you've seen shows, I'm sure, where there's there's badgers and coyotes hunting together. There's wolves and bears that hunt together. They make alliances. There's even a frog that uh, that will uh, pair up with the tarantulas. Mm -hmm. You've seen that? Yeah. Yeah, and it's very weird that the frog will keep parasites and stuff off the tarantula, and the tarantula protects the frog. And so they live in a harmonious relationship. The frog will eat ants and things and keep them from the tarantula. And so it's very, it's a very weird thing, dude. And, and so they, they live in sort of a symbiotic relationship. Maybe that's what this was. And so I was thinking like, um, kind of like a shark and like little, little minnows. They're kind of just all around. those things that they attach to the, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Just like, it's not that like they're actually like helpful in any way. It's just like, you're so small and useless. <laughs> What's the point of me even eating you? Yeah. Like, you know, it's like, so like, if you just want to be around and you want to do stuff for me, that's okay. Why would yeah. I stop that? You know? Anyways, moving on from that, um, weirdness. Uh, there is another dog man story I got out of that area. This was definitely a dog man. And it was some people that were staying in an RV and they were camped right there by the lake, I guess, to the south side of the lake. It's a very pretty drive, too, folks. If you go out there and you drive across the dam and you and you look off to the to the left, you can see the lake, especially at the sunset. It's a very beautiful place. Um, 
it's not a really large lake, but there's a lot of woods around there and it's a very beautiful, a lot of trails, a lot of places to fish. It is part of the San Gabriel river. So if you go further down, you can get to the river. And, um, so anyways, there were some people that were staying in an RV and they were, I don't want to say accosted, but they, they were, they heard something moving around in the woods. Their, their campsite was the furthest away from the other campsites and they were in an RV and they were, uh, not isolated, but they were kind of like, there wasn't a lot of people there and it was, uh, starting to get cold. It was later in the fall. There weren't many campers out there. Uh, there were like maybe two other people in their area where they were at and they were right there by the lake. And they said that, uh, they heard something splashing as they were trying to, to grill. They were, uh, grilling some, uh, food or whatever. They heard something splash in the water, very large. And they kind of look at each other. It was an, it was an older couple, um, you know, and they were like, what is that? And so then the, the son shows up, he had gone into town to get some supplies and he comes out with his uh, fiance and they told them, they said that we, we were, we were getting the grill ready, whatever. And, and we heard something splashing in the water. Sound like it was right there by the bank. And they heard while they were talking about that and telling the uh, son and the daughter-in-law, whatever, that they heard foot, footsteps like going through the woods. Obviously it was very clear that it was on two legs and that it was like crunching. They could hear twigs snapping and something moving branches, tree branches. And they were like, what is that? They didn't see anything. Now, it was already dark at this point, And they took a flashlight and they looked into the woods. And they didn't see anything. There was nothing there. So then eventually they sit around talking or whatever. And every like 20, 30 minutes, they would hear like something moving in the woods. And it did sound like a person, like how a person would be moving around, whatever. But it was very large. And they, they, but here's what happened. So they go in to the, to the RV and they all go to sleep. Middle of the night, the RV begins to shake, like literally rock back and forth. Uh, the sun, okay, opens up one of the curtains and looks, doesn't see anything. Uh, his wife or fiance, I guess fiance at that time now his wife or whatever. She opened up the curtain on the other side. She's like, I don't see anything. And then at that point, the, the mother wakes up of the sun and she is like, what in what what in the heck's going on? You know, the, sh- the shaking. She said her husband was still asleep because he sleeps through anything. And she said that finally she opens up the curtain in the back, and there in the very back of the RV was this thing with it like clear as day, like its face almost pushed against the glass with its arms. She said arms, not legs. This thing was not on all fours. It was absolutely a werewolf looking creature. Had its arms stretched out, grabbing the back of this RV and was shaking it back and forth. And she said that it wasn't even like looking right into the glass when she opened it. It was kind of like looking down and kind of uh, like doing what it was doing, you know. And then she said it turned and it looked up and she said she locked eyes with it. And the the son and the, the, the daughter-in-law or whatever were toward the other side of the RV, toward the front of the RV. And they were like just stunned. You know, they were looking at this thing. They didn't get as good of a look at it as she did. She said she looked right into it and the eyes were red. I mean, like glowing red, but she, you know, she said that the middle, uh, like she saw right into the eyes. She said it was red, like the pupils were red, everything was red. And then you could see like the, the, the outside of the, of the eye was, was like a normal eye, but it was red. And she said that it looked just completely demonic and evil and it was just staring right at her. And then she said she got the angriest, most evilest feeling and look from this thing. She said it was like absolutely demonic, but she said, even beyond the, the red eyes and the, the shape of the creature and the way it looked, she said she saw human in there. It was like something human, but it was like something that was um, like she believed it was a werewolf. Like it was a person who had changed into this thing. That's what she honestly believes ha- it was. There was no, uh, well, there's this thing called the dog man and it, and it runs around the woods and it's always like that. No, she really believed that this was like some sort of like werewolf. Like it was a human who had taken on that shape and it was a possessed, uh, human who was like, um, I don't know how you say it. Like, like a shapeshifter, basically. She really believed that. Like she said, honestly, hundred percent, the, the husband woke up as this thing moved around the other side and they all went to the other side where it was at. Uh, it looked into the window and then they realized at that point, you know, uh, that they didn't have a firearm. They didn't have anything to protect them from, uh, this thing, but a buck knife, uh, a fishing uh, knife and, and a buck knife. And that was about it. 
And so, and, and a steak knife, I think they said, or something. Um, so they all grabbed the knife because that's all they had. They didn't have any firearms or anything on them. Um, and this thing just kind of stalked around their RV. Uh, they did have a cell phone, but there was no cell phone signal where they were at. So they, they couldn't uh, call anybody and they were just stunned. I mean, they were just stuck. So this thing pretty much went around and, and began to slam into the, the sides of the RV to punch and smack and make a bunch of noise. Well, luckily, there were two other uh, RV campers in that area, not super close, but one was close enough to hear all this commotion. And uh, they remember just a bright light being shined on their uh, camper. And uh, then it just stopped. And so then the the people that were like the neighbors or whatever, they came walking over. They, they walked over there. I guess they didn't realize that this thing was there. So they hear it bang, 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 bang. Like, you know, and they're like, hey, are you okay? And they begin to knock on the RV and they open the door and they're like, there's these two people there, like a couple in their night clothes. And one of them had a shotgun. He had a, a, a gun on him and he was like, is everything okay? We hear all this screaming and yelling and commotion, you know, and they were you know, rural country people, you know, those kind of people that live out there. And they were, they actually, I guess, stay out there regularly. They just rent that space or whatever. And, uh, they were like, what's going on? We heard all this screaming and yelling and they started to tell them the story or whatever. Well, <clears throat> the guy and the girl kind of looked the, the, the couple that, that the middle-aged couple that came and I guess to their rescue, if you want to call it that, uh, kind of looked at each other and they made a weird face. And the guy was just like, what, what are you talking about? Like he just did not, they did not, really buy into their story they were just like that's weird and so they just kind of talked to him for a few minutes and they said are you okay and they said we're packing up we're leaving and they said okay and then they they went back to their uh rv and uh you know they were all packing their stuff up and, and got the heck out of there the scary thing was is that when they when they were attempting to uh leave or whatever the, here's the weird thing the rv would not start like they they could not get it to start it was like the battery had been drained so they had to get these people to uh, help them get the battery jumped or whatever, and then, and then they were able to leave, and then those people went back to their RV or whatever. Um, but it was weird that that would happen. Like, what would cause that to drain the battery? Um, this entity, this creature, whatever it was, doesn't sound like your typical, like, dog man type entity. Just as the creature that was under the bridge did not uh, sound very similar to the dogman thing. Now, now the, the lady that saw this thing dead on face to face with this creature claimed that it was gray, that it was very gray and it had a triangular shaped head and that it looked very much like a timber wolf, but it was gray, just absolutely an ashen gray color and that its arms were complete. And she said arms look muscular arms, like a man. She said it looked like a bodybuilder, um, but like leaner, you know, uh, she said it had no fat. She's like, you could see ab muscles on this thing. Like it, when it backed up, you could see it. And it walked like a man. They did not get a good look at the legs. Now that was the thing I asked. I said, did you see the legs? And they said, no, that, that, that it was, it was stalking around and they just saw it going by, you know, like it's profile going by the windows or whatever. There were no descriptions of the legs to, to speak of. And of course the couple that came and gave them assistance and helped them get out of there. They didn't see the legs either. They didn't see anything. They didn't see anything. So they couldn't, yeah, that's what I meant. They, they, they didn't see anything either. So they couldn't tell me anything. There wouldn't have been any information that they could that could tell me about this. Um, so we're mo moving on, and we got a couple more things, and then we're done here. But uh, here, here's, what, here's another weird story I got out of Granger Lake because it's uh, right there, like I said, by Hoxie. Um, this is not a dogman story. This one is a UFO, I guess a UFO story. And I know these two guys personally. And uh, I've talked to them many times. They hunt and fish in that area, and they they shoot the uh, uh, hogs out there because you can shoot hogs anywhere in Texas, and and you actually can get a bounty for them depending on the county how much you get. But uh, they're out in the bush and they were hunting hogs. And uh, the first time that that they saw something out there, because because the one guy had two incidents out there. Um, the first time he saw something out there, they they were hunting hogs. In the area on the other side of Granger Lake, I guess going to the uh, east of, of of Granger Lake, and they said that uh, they were out in the bush, him and a buddy, and uh, they see this uh, like blue orb. Now it wasn't; it started out as blue, but he said it was weird. It was like bobbing through the trees, just up and down, bobbing through the trees. And you know, I could do a whole show on just orbs or whatever, but it might be kind of boring because you're just hearing about orbs or whatever. But this is weird. Um, he said that by the time it got 
uh, within about 50 yards of where they were at, that it began to change colors from blue and it began to like shake and kind of vibrate. And then it turned into like a, almost like an aqua marine color. And then it eventually turned into like a, a greenish color. And then he said it became like cylindrical. Like it kind of became cylindrical, almost the size of like a person, like a man. And he said that it began to like just float through the trees in between the trees. And it was definitely headed their direction. So he freaked out. They ran, they got on the ATVs and they took off. They were just like, you know, this is, this is too weird, you know? And then they got back to their truck, you know, and, and I guess their ATV, whatever. And they loaded it up. They got it on the truck, whatever. And they, they got out of there. Um, didn't see it again. Now that, that is pretty interesting because close to that same area, probably three or four miles to the north of that, I had gotten a story, uh, from somebody who had been out on the, on the river. And when they went to leave an orb type, uh, entity looking thing, uh, started out as an orb and kind of materialized into what they said, looked like a woman went across, uh, the, this field coming from the river, went across this field, uh, over, over like a, a maze field. And then it got down almost to the road. And they said that it looked like it almost materialized into an angelic looking female. And they said that they watched it very clearly. They could see it coming toward them as they were driving along in their SUV. And there were four people in the vehicle and they saw it like going over the tops of this maze field. And they said that it, once it got to the road, right after they had passed it, they looked back and they said it almost looked like a, an angel, like a female. And she had like blondish uh, hair and it just kind of materialized. And then she kind of floated across the road and they saw this, like they were all like looking back, just dumbfounded. And then it just kind of faded as it got to the other side of the road and and they all were like hey this this really happened you know and these were were people that i've i've talked to two of them um face to face and they've actually told me this story uh that happened probably in the late 90s and so anyways i got that story when i was working at the club and one of them used to come up there every now and then and i went to school with that guy's cousin so we 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 got to know each other um and his his now wife was with him when this happened and they were like you know young people back then but anyways, that that's a weird story involving that same kind of s- scenario of this orb looking thing that kind of changed shapes. It was the same thing. It was like a bluish uh, orb, but it never changed into the uh, to the cylindrical thing. It just stayed that way. It actually materialized into a uh, person or like an entity. So it was like a bluish greenish orb that was like a cylinder that that like like what this other guy saw. But this actually materialized into. A, and now here's the thing: both incidents scared the people because it was like an aberration, not an, is an apparition, but also an aberration. Like something you're just, you're not used to seeing something like that every day. So you're terrified. You're going like, what is that? But they didn't get a malevolent feeling from it. It was more of just like a fear of the un- unknown. Like mm-hmm. they didn't know what they were seeing, mm-hmm. but yeah, I understand. They're not scared of it. Like it's not the same as having like that aura that are the, uh, just like the energy of just around it. It's not, uh, malicious. Yeah, it's not like demonic. Some, like some of these other creatures that are cryptids that you hear about, mm-hmm. like the dog man or other ones, uh, you'll you'll feel like that fear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, th- what what did they feel instead of that though? Uh, that's a good question. And actually, I did ask that. Did you were you afraid? And they said, well, we were kind of afraid as it came towards us because we thought it was like a UFO. And the the girl was like, you know, well, I thought we were going to be abducted, you know, <laughs> and she was like, I didn't know what that entailed, but I just thought this is like a UFO. And she kept saying, go faster. And she's like, we were already going too fast for that county road already. You know, those county roads are small and you've been on them. They're, they're narrow and you can't just haul butt on them. But, you know, the thing is, I mean, th- th- they didn't they didn't get a malicious or malevolent feeling. And as they saw it turn into this female. The girl that was in the back seat did say, this is one thing that was weird. Now, this was being told to me by one couple, the, the couple that were in the back of the SUV and the girl who I did not interview. This was just told to me, but what they said, she said that she was looking in the back and that she clearly saw like this thing had like a blonde, blonde hair and the ears were almost pointed like an elf's, like you would see like an elf, like in uh, Lord of the Rings or something. So that's weird. Like, like, you know, what is that? Some kind of fairy? I don't, I don't know. Fairy queen crossed on a road or whatever? <laughs> a fairy, a fairy, okay, <laughs> what would make you say a fairy queen? Like, does it have a crown Jeez. on its head? 
it just was like, so it was like an elf. And I knew I was going to get you to say something funny with that one, too. Uh, folks, if you get a hankering for like a mystical burger or some uh, magical chicken fingers, go to the Fairy Queen. <laughs> At those, they got those blizzards of <laughs> the Fairy Queen. Uh, okay. Well, anyways, that that is that is weird. And Tony, I kind of baited you with that to see what you would say on that one. But uh, so, anyway, this is the last encounter I'm going to tell. Uh, we're almost out of time here. But th- this one was on the lake. Okay. And this was three guys that were fishing. One had gone to sleep and he was under protest at that point. He wanted to go back to the shore. And I, I I know this guy. In fact, you know one of them pretty probably pretty well. Um, and he's kind of a complainer, and he fell asleep. And these other two guys claim that this uh, orb of light was hovering above them in the sky, was like right above them, and they were looking up at it. And it, they said they kept they they saw it was almost like it started out as a star. Uh, at least they were kind of assuming that because according to them they didn't uh, see it at the at like like when it was. But they think that it was really small and then it began to be bigger. And they said that, that they looked up at the point where it was like almost like a softball in the sky. And it was kind of bouncing around, moving around. But it wasn't going outside of a little like a kind of a circle. It was just kind of bouncing around in what would look like an invisible circle, like a circular movement, I should say. And, and they said that it was like bouncing around like within a circle. And, you know, and so I asked them to clarify. And they said, well, like if you had like an invisible ring that it was just kind of bouncing off of. And eventually it began to come down toward them over the lake and it got closer and closer and closer until it was like probably, you know, according to them, maybe, you know, a hundred feet above them and they could clearly see it and it was pulsating and there was, it was all blue, but in the middle there were, there was like a, another little ball within, within it. And it was like multicolored, almost like rainbow colors just flashing within th- that ball. And they said that a light like kind of emanated from it at one point and it lit them all up and it kind of like went over all three of them. The one friend just sat there in the boat and was out. He was asleep the whole time, did not wake up, did not move. They were stunned. They sat there looking up at this thing. And then it just kind of like went, like, like went toward the West and then zigzagged and then went toward the East and then went straight up and then was just, just kept going, going, going until it was like a dot in the sky. So they didn't report anything weird. Like there was no missing time Nothing like that, you know, nothing weird, bizarre up to that. It was just that. It was just a weird, you know, that weird incident. So uh, I, I don't know what to make of that. I don't know what that was. That was just like a uh, uh, a weird story that I was given, you know, and and um, there are some other stories I could tell you about that area, but I'm going to wait because I have a friend who's written a book about some ghost stories about this area called Apache Pass. It's not far from there, it's about 15 miles to the west, and then you get into a whole nother bunch of weird stories, and I was going to save those for when we talk about that area, because those stories are from that area. But uh, yeah, that's it for now, folks. That That's all we have, the time we have for tonight, and uh, I, I thank you for being with us and, and listening to me prattle on about all this weird stuff that's happened out there in this area of uh, Hoxie, uh, Granger Lake area. Um, these are some great stories that, that, that I've collected over the years from, from eyewitnesses and from people who've told me, you know, I could tell you a hundred different, uh, supposed, he said, she said stories of, of legends and, you know, stories of like the, 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 con- the convict and the headless horseman. And of course, you know, the, uh, the, the black bull and, and, you know, but, but those aren't, I, mean, I would be getting into like, you know, oh, these are just kind of like almost like urban legends, you know, like everybody has the same experience and then they have this. And so I gave you the best of what I had for those. If anybody's listening and you have any stories or legends from the region uh, of where you're from, you know, I know somebody recently from Ohio gave me a really cool story about a bridge and, and, uh, and I'm going to tell that eventually one day as a pretty, pretty neat story. So if you got any stories about haunted bridges or, or haunted rivers or, or maybe the lake where you live is haunted, if there's a swamp monster in the lake or whatever, uh, give us your stories and, and we'll sit here and we'll talk about them. And Tony will, uh, will be disinterested and, and, you know, tell me to be quiet. I didn't say that <laughs> out loud. <laughs> no. Telepathically, my mind's eye, I saw you saying it, sir. I heard you. I, I, I heard you in my mind's eye, but I saw you mouthing the words, I'm going to kill you. 
And I was like, oh my God. No, I said that out loud. I just turned off the mic. Oh, is that what that was? Yeah. So, okay. but uh, no, I mean, this, if anything, all in all, the what you should learn from this story is that, uh, just if you're going to Granger Lake, just be ready for all kinds of something. <laughs> Some to sort of wackiness. You have all all types of possibilities when you hang out in Granger or, yeah. or Hoxie. Yeah, that whole area. Yeah, and folks, if you want to go check out the bridge, I have to tell you this. You know, do not go running around on that bridge. Okay, you can go on there. Yeah, it, it's it's yeah. Don't climb on it. Don't listen. Uh, don't don't uh, do it. Don't do as we do. <laughs> do as we say, not as we did. Yeah, exactly. So, because if you climb on that bridge, that thing is about ready to cave. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not so, safe. Yeah, it's closed off, but you can still climb up on it. But I would not recommend that, folks. If you go visit the bridge, stay off of it. I repeat, okay, you're hearing it from Josh Turner and Tony Long, also known as Mushu and Wolf. Okay, we are absolutely telling you to stay off of that bridge because it is dangerous. Okay, yep. so we are not responsible for anything that yes, happens. Yes, if you fall in and, want... and you get eaten by a troll, yep. I mean, that's on you. It's on you, bro. I mean, are you're you know, or, or they're on you. Yep. <laughs> if you get chased by a, a haunted hog or a a, a dead convict that, that was a, was a mouthy guy and got killed or. A headless horseman chases you. We are not responsible for or that. Or if you get lost and you end up on the wrong bridge and a bull chases you, then yes, that's on you too. That's on you too. <laughs> and if a dog man snatches you up into a tree and eats you or a cat person, uh, we're not responsible for that, folks. Or a, tr- or a troll burns you with his fireball. <laughs> you know? Doing magic and stuff. Doing magic. We are not responsible, once again, folks. But it is a pleasant place for the most part. Thousands of people go there every year, and they don't get abducted or have anything weird happen to them. And they just enjoy it, and they go out there, and they have a good old time. Uh, But uh, then again, lots of people do have weird experiences out there. So, folks, thank you for listening. Uh, This has been uh, PRT uh, Paranormal Roundtable. It's me, Wolf, and and, uh, my co-host, Mushu. And uh, we want to tell you from whatever lake you're being uh, abducted from by a UFO or being chased by a shrieking banshee or a, or whatever a black bull. Mi- uh, demon mid- uh, monsters casting yoga fire at you. Just, <laughs> just stay uh, away. Good night. <laughs>